Hi, uh, welcome to the MyFreeActingClass.com uh, lesson for Tuesday, October the 13th. I am Michael Bean, and uh, today we're, we've got a couple of things. Uh, so we are starting something new, uh, and today is the, the very first time that we're doing this, uh, and my plan is to do this next Monday, but honestly, I can do it anytime there's enough of uh, these that I get from you, uh, which is uh, reviewing your self-tapes. So rather than assign an actor's challenge and uh, get you to do a specific scene, you know, really, I'm where I'm choosing a general scene uh, and sort of putting it out there. Instead, send me the self-tapes that you're already doing. And if you're not doing self-tapes, well, this is a great incentive you know, to find one of those practice scripts online or to submit yourself for an independent film or a student film. If you're in Vancouver, I want to throw it out there again, that the place to go to find independent film and student film auditions is vancouveractorsguide.com. vancouveractorsguide.com. And if you check that, say, once a week, you know, or even like once every couple of weeks, uh, then you will find things that are appropriate for you uh, come up there. And then you'll get to work on material that's not just practice, but that gives you a chance of actually being on set because there are folks who are in the same way that they're being very careful on professional film sets right now. There are still folks at film schools. There are still folks who are independent filmmakers who are using this time to build new products for themselves. Uh, and particularly having just come up off of you know, however many months of full quarantine, depending on you know, where you are in the world, a lot of the word that I heard you know, in some of those early interviews from artists, from directors, uh, from talent agents, you know, was that folks were spending that time at home writing new things and doing preparation for their new projects. You know, and so when not only will I think we see like quite a significant um, spike in, in new creation uh, once uh, the pandemic restrictions uh, ease up, you know, which you know, are hopefully sooner than later, uh, but also people are in the process of making those things right now. And independent films, student films, it's the way that a lot of actors get started. Uh, some of you who are watching may have seen Ben Cotton's uh, interview from uh, a number of a uh, number of months ago, uh, but he talked uh, really openly about how when he first got himself started, uh, he just said yes to everything. You know, he just sought out every independent film, every student film. Cassandra Ebner, who we talked to a couple of uh, weeks ago, said the same thing. Uh, that she just sought out every f opportunity that she could to participate, that she was a PA on film sets, you know, that she was just like fetching coffee. I mean, I think at that point she was in high school, you know, the, maybe that's not the best in, you know, for an adult, but honestly, like anything that keeps you in the game, anything that uh, keeps you excited about it and participating uh, is uh, probably useful for you. I'm just multitasking and pulling up the link to uh, Ben's interview, there we go, uh, uh, because that's one of those ones that uh, he asked me to make private so I can share it with you in the chat window. There we go, chat window. Uh, that's Ben Cotton. Uh, I'm really, Ben's a deeply soulful human uh, and a wonderful artist. So if you didn't get a chance to watch his interview, there's the, the link to his. Uh, and so uh, the today we're going to uh, review a video that uh, Dia sent. So this will be our very first, like looking at a self tape, you know, and analyzing it in detail, so that we're not talking in abstract about you know, eye lines and eye lights, you know, and angles and what people are assuming based on what you look like. Instead, we're using a real person, Dia, who's right there in her video, uh, and so she's the one who's like being super brave and letting us. Uh, you know, pull that apart today. And uh, my hope is uh, that one or two or five or nine of you who are doing self-tapes for commercials, for film and TV, uh, for uh, your own practice, for independent films, for student films, will send copies of those self-tapes. And if they are for projects that are currently auditioning, then I just won't record that lesson. And you'll have to, and people will have to be here for that lesson. But obviously, if it's uh, if it's for something that you were auditioning for day before yesterday, 
you know, um, I won't be able to record that and put it on YouTube, you know, or else I'd get in all sorts of trouble. Um, but in terms of showing it in class, you know, that falls under um, educational use or fair use, you know, even under straight copyright law in Canada. And so we're not breaking any rules. We can totally look at it together. You know, um, I probably would fall under fair use even if I posted it, you know, uh, out there in the world. But like, why make anybody's life difficult? Uh, the productions often feel very, very strongly about nobody seeing their scripts until after the products have aired. So uh, I will remind you again tomorrow and the day after, uh, but please uh, email me your self-tapes, info at uh, myfreeactingclass.com. You know, uh, and the, uh, yeah, I would love that. Uh, please send me one of Christians for next Monday and then we'll look at it in class. Um, and especially, and if it's an older one, you know, then I can even record that lesson. Um, the uh, Christian's mom was just like, I can send you one. So great. Yes, more like them. You know, and Candy, uh, how did it go talking, uh, looking for independent film, student films in San Diego? <laughs> okay, I should ask you when people aren't you know, playing reggae music in the background or something. Okay, uh, let's, we can get right into watching uh, DSL tape and I'll ask you towards the end of the lesson. So, a uh, quick reminder of uh, kind of basic camera technique. Framing is what the camera sees. This is what's called a medium close-up that I am in currently. You know, if I was back far enough that you could see my waist, uh, that would be a medium shot. Uh, we're making, uh, looking for no space over the head, uh, somebody who's centered or just slightly off center so that they've got nose room, they're looking in the direction that they're talking. Uh, eye light is the, uh, light that's reflected in your eyes. Uh, I'm across from a big window, but I just recently invested in a very inexpensive uh, ring light that I got off of Amazon because I've been playing with new equipment. Hey, Christina, I haven't seen you in ages. So good to see you. Uh, and so uh, I will, I can say that it does make a difference, right? So you can see that it, you know, there's more fill, you know, there's more light. And this is just like the absolute most basic, you know, very inexpensive uh, desktop model of a ring light. You know, for tomorrow's lesson, uh, I'll show you what it looks like with a box of Christmas lights that's just turned around in the box so that all the bulbs are facing outwards. And you'll see that it helps. Like it just gives you more light. It gives you something reflective in your eyes. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, what I normally use for these lessons is a straight desk lamp with a piece of paper clothes pinned over top, you know, that is just pointing right in my eyeballs. Um, so anybody who's like, I don't have the gear, like you don't need it. Really, you're fine. Right, if you've got a taupe back wall that you can take the stuff off of and you can point a desk lamp at your eyes, you're probably fine. Uh, so eye light, eye line, meaning your, uh, where the imaginary line between your eyes and what you're looking at is close to camera, but not directly at camera. Uh, something that I ended up going over, uh, I had a couple of uh, coaching clients before my lesson today. And that reminder that you want people to always be able to see your eyes. And the reason that as a teacher, I recommend splitting uh, or crossing the axis, splitting the eye line so that it's opposite side of the camera is that then you're still only moving you know, that far, right? You're, still, you're shifting your eyes that far. But if you do that on the same side of the camera, the risk is that the audience thinks you're confused about where to look. You know, and so I'm talking to you and then I look over there. And if I'm trying to have a different relationship between this person and that person, I'm like, hey, Huh. You know, then the risk is the audience like, whoa, what's even happening there? But if it's the same distance, if I go from this side to that side, because my eyeballs go from this side of the screen to that side of the screen, crystal clear, much, much clearer story-wise. I basically, I have to do less work as an actor. Yeah, and I'll let you in on that. If I haven't said that yet, one of the things that I really love uh, is anything technical where you do less work, but you look like a more skilled actor. Like those are the things that make me happy. You know, I, I like efficiency in general. And as a teacher, if I can make you look amazing uh, or, or highly skilled while also making your life easier and having you do, do less work, I feel like, you know, I, that, that's like, I don't know, I'm tricking somebody. I, I like that stuff. I like those technical bits. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, Dia's tape. Here we go. It's 48 seconds, so we'll watch the whole thing. Uh, and then I think uh, we'll go back and uh, and look at specific parts of it. This is a monologue from 
uh, the fault in your fault in our stars, I think, uh, that uh, she didn't say why she was assigned to it or why she taped it, but I believe that's the origin of it. It's fine. It's sliding out, it see. And you find a port. And you say, I'm going to stay here for a few days. And then a few days becomes a few years and you forgot where you were going in the first place and then you realize you don't really care where you're going because you like where you're at that's how it is for me i like where So some, there's some things here that are working really well, right? You can see that she's got a nice clean background. Uh, there's no shadows back there. Uh, she's centered in the middle of her frame. She's in an absolute medium close up. Her eye line is close to camera, could probably be a little closer to camera. Dia, one of the simplest technical things that you could do uh, to improve the apparent quality of your self tapes and also it will help make other people think you're feeling more is more eye light you can see that there's like a tiny little bit of eye light here uh, but it, the although you are very well lit we're not getting that reflective spot in your eyes you also might want to consider and i gotta say you can, should probably ask leanne about this in more detail when she comes back because makeup not my field of expertise but in general you usually want your eyes to be the shiniest thing and so you might want to consider uh wearing a uh, lip gloss or whatever that is uh the uh, whatever you're wearing on your lips have it be uh, less shiny uh just again so that there's more attention on your eyes i'd say the same thing about uh the the necklace you know that um it does help communicate character to us, you know, and uh, like it, maybe it's not so much bling that it's going to be distracting, you know, but there, there are moments here where I think the, as an audience member watching this for the first time, I'm noticing your jewelry instead of watching your eyes, you know, and so I may not have had a chance to say this, you know, but like, uh, like anything that's sort of like big and shiny and distracting, uh, anything that's sparkly, even shirts that have sparkly logos, the reason why it's a good idea to avoid those, unless you're choosing them specifically to help tell the story of the character, uh, is so that uh, people are looking at your eyes instead. So I think, you know, eyelight's probably the clearest thing here. The other thing uh, that this tape makes me think of, and this is why I'm excited about this practice, because each is each one is so different. Uh, and looking at a real thing, I think um, the uh, helps give context. You know, um, and so every little thing that happens, we read as information about the character, and so. What's great is we don't, sorry, dear, that's an unflattering free string. There we go. Mm, slight. Oh man, you know, this is why you know, videos and stills are different, uh, different uh, formats. But everything that you're doing, the, you touching your face, you know, uh, the angle of your head, potentially all of this is information about what your character is feeling. You know, and so um, the, like this, right, the, the angle of the head, uh, something that I look out for in students all the time, particularly uh, be if they are doing a scene that requires authority. Now, this one doesn't. You know, this one, you know, uh, she's being, uh, it comes across anyway as a coy or a fl flirtatious, you know, or um, like loving and affectionate, you know, which I suspect you know, was the intention or close to the intention. But part of what is communicating that it is literally just the angle of the head. You know, this is you know, um, more vulnerable or non-threatening. And so make sure, those of you who are watching, that if you are doing a character where that's not appropriate, you know, where you want to be standing up to somebody, that you're not like, oh yeah, come back here and say that because you do that crooked, it's going to read as information about the character. It's going to make your character come across as though they have less authority or less confidence. Um, the your eyes are moving around quite a bit. Uh, and again, I don't think it doesn't read as actor behavior to me, although it may be a, a result of something you know, that is happening in your actor process. Uh, 
to me, it reads as information about the character. I'm watching this for the first time. You know, and so the fact that these eye lines are moving all the time te uh, tells me that you're processing something, you're feeling something, you know, you keep kind of checking back in with him. Uh, and another thing, you know, that like, look, I am not going to ever teach you a my free acting class lesson on it, like how to be flirty on camera. A, not my field of expertise. Also B, feel kind of weird and creepy about that. But what I can say is that in this scene, uh, because of the smile, the relationship, and particularly, uh, I know it seems just ridiculously oversimplified, but because she is touching her face, uh, that that reads on camera uh, as uh, behavior that is uh, sensual or flirty, you know, uh, the, or I think particularly sensual, you know, if, a, if an actor uh, you know, is touching themselves or their hair, you know, or uh, in some way, that that's a way you can bring that kind of energy into a scene uh, without needing to um, kind of be, uh, sort of be over the top with it, you know, like, or uh, communicate it, you know, in some way that, that might be uh, cheesy. So it's, it's very effective physical behavior, you know, and when an actor is comfortable with it, I will sometimes say, okay, well, in the script, it says that you're supposed to like, you know, reach out and touch the other person, you know, but instead, you know, because we can't see that and you can't bring that in the shot. Instead, just, you know, touch yourself, you know, the, right, in some like simple, small human way. So this, you know, thing that, you know, Dia is doing here, uh, which seems like absolutely normal human behavior, uh, reads as information. You know, so the, so the short things, you know, are, you know, uh, I light, you know, think about whether or not that you're going to wear the sparkly jewelry because we're going to notice the diamonds and it's going to make you look fancy. You know, we're going to basically, the, it's going to communicate that the character is supposed to be rich, you know, or, you know, like a uh, high class, you know, or, or and, and sometimes you're going to want to communicate that and sometimes not. Um, the, uh, right, it's all, everything that we see becomes information about the character, whether you want it to be or not. Uh, and, and then it's useful for everybody else. And thank you so much for sharing, because some of the things you're doing there, whether you did them consciously or not, are, uh, communicating beautifully what's happening in the scene. Yeah, Dia, do you want to jump in there? Um, so I actually turned this tape around in maybe 24 hours and it was a long, they wanted a bit sensual and it's from The Star Is Born. So I had the- a Star Is Born, that's what it was. Yeah, and also I was trying to do something completely different. And I think I only had time to do maybe three tapes and I think this was the third one. And I feel, I, in general, I'm really fidgety. So I think I was maybe fidgety. So I just want to love your opinion if that's, if you got that or if it was. No, I, to me, uh, as somebody who doesn't know you, it just read as character, right? It, it read as you being like excited or nervous about the guy as opposed to the actor being excited or nervous. And this is one of the things that I say to actors uh, all the time, which is that if you can tolerate the discomfort of uh, just like being uncomfortable in your body and letting it happen and staying in character and staying connected out here anyway, people who don't know you especially are going to assume that it's the character. Like even, even I've, I've even, I've seen somebody suppress a sneeze, you know, and I was like, yeah, no, it works. It's fine. Like if you're like, here's my line. And, and after I was like, wow, what an interesting beat. Like what a moment. And I'm like, no, I just, I really, I got something I had to sneeze. Uh, Right, that as long as you stay in character, almost anything that you're thinking and feeling uh, can become information about what the character is thinking and feeling. Uh, and that's so good to know that the that it was that your intention with it was to be sensual. That that's not just me being creepy and uh, and watching it. You know, so uh, thank you for that. You know, like reassurance that like the thing that I'm picking up is actually the thing that you were trying to do on purpose. Uh, yeah, totally. I, I tried whispering or I tried to make it, I, I think I reduced the volume because I wanted it to be a much more, um, like you said, sensual. So, oh, and the yeah. other thing uh, that I didn't mention is that you, uh, that volume, you know, which, um, it, she didn't sound whispery, did she? Right. And she was, she was using almost no volume. Like she was being very, very, very quiet, but it reads as intimate, you know? And so that, uh, again, like a nice, clear example of the camera hears you from six inches away.
but the even when you are in a wider shot, typically if you've got a decent microphone or if you're in a space you know, that uh, has reasonable sound in it, the camera is hearing you from very, very close. You know, and so one of the reasons that we see that kind of um, intimacy a lot you know, is that it's very uh, compelling, is that it causes an audience to lean in and go, oh, what are they feeling? Like, what is going on? You know, whereas if I'm advertising what I'm feeling and I'm really trying to bring it across to you, then there's a sense of like, ah, ah, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, so that was the first, I, I didn't know how long it would take to look at DS tape. You know, obviously, you know, if, uh, I get uh, even a couple of these you know, for Monday, that'll be enough. You know, they, we can spend Monday uh, looking at you know, two or three tapes uh, and I can show you technical things about each of them. And hopefully it'll give you a sense of what people are auditioning for. I think maybe it'll be useful for everybody. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that I pulled today is you know, like a, a real like micro audition uh, because I, knew that we might not have very much time. Uh, and also I think that these are particularly challenging. You know, so we've got some people who want to, to demo for us. You know, like Eve, you know, your setup is so great. You know, like Christina right here. Oh, ah, Christina, sorry, I'm just seeing your hand. Uh, the, uh, what was your question? I just wanna know for the, sorry, I'm just like, what is happening at this moment? But for the, um, to send in your tapes on Monday, is it like the actor's challenge one or are you doing your own monologues? Oh, uh, this is um, uh, any self-tape, you know, so okay. if you've got something that you're doing for practice uh, or if you've had to submit a self-tape for an independent film or a student film or an actual audition, uh, if you email it to info at uh, myfreeactingclass.com, then I will review those self-tapes and we'll use that, you know, to sort of replace the actor's challenge. So do you just have more freedom about material? And if you're like, oh my gosh, I just don't know where to find scripts, um, then uh, if you're really desperate, then you can email me. But honestly, I'm gonna email you and say like, here, I Googled it and these are the top six results. Uh, finding scripts online, not very difficult right now. <laughs> if you happen to be a member of Casting Workbook, they actually, Casting Workbook has actually put in an archive feature or, uh, where you can go and find scripts for your age group. You know, uh, and so, uh, that, yeah, it's a new feature at Casting Workbook. I assume because so many people are stuck at home and they're trying to be supportive of that. Um, so if you are in Vancouver, you, know, you probably already have a member uh, membership for uh, castingworkbook.com and so there's scripts there, but really like finding scripts online, not difficult. And it can be as simple as sitting down and making a list of 10 shows where you're like, I feel like I'm some, in some way like these characters. Uh, and then you can, you can probably find scripts from those TV shows. But if you're like, oh yeah, here's a character who's like me, maybe not completely like me, but like me in some way that is interesting for me. I, so many scripts are available online right now. You know, like once like someone you can, someone you can relate to, right? So like yeah. you can get into that character easier. That's exactly what I'm suggesting, yeah. Oh, I, you know what? Instead of doing this little micro script, script, maybe I'll save that for tomorrow because there's one more thing that I want to share with you, which is that Candice Elzinga, who came in for, uh, to talk to us for half an hour a couple of, um, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, she cast Batwoman, she cast a whole bunch of stuff. On Thursday uh, from, I think, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 10 a.m. to 12 uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time is doing a free casting director workshop uh, through uh, the Casting Workbook Labs. And so I will show you where to find that. Uh, so uh, here, cwblabs.com. You know, and if you went into view our upcoming guests, uh, you would find this, uh, Candice Elzinga, October 15th, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific uh, Standard Time, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, what's the D? Hmm. I feel like I should know what that means. Uh, anyway, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, one hour, Ask Me Anything session with uh, casting director Candace Helsinga. You know, so you can see uh, Batwoman, The 100. You know, uh, she has uh, cast a whole bunch of things uh, and she really knows what she's doing. There we go. Four-time Emmy nominated, ca nominated casting director, 300 productions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so register for free. Uh, 
if, if as far as I know, there is no catch. You might have to be a casting workbook member. That might be as much catch as there is. But if you're watching this and you're an actor in Vancouver, you probably already have a casting workbook membership. And you know, your agent will ask you to sign up for one as soon as you find an agent anyhow. Okay. Uh, Dia, thank you so much for you know, being brave and letting us you know, uh, look at your scene today. It, that felt really useful you know, to pull apart and look at. You know? And if you've got another one, you know, uh, email it sometime this week and, uh, and we'll look at it on Monday. Yeah, right? Does everybody remember the, um, you know, uh, yeah, 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 right? <laughs> the, the, this is applause. So we can just put it in gallery view and be like, yeah. Uh, and uh, does anybody have uh, questions for me about any of the things that I've gone over today before I wrap up today's lesson? And if so, okay, Christina jumped in with hers, but does anybody else have anything they want to ask? No. Okay, uh, well, it is 4.30, time to go back into our lives and do the things that we need to do. Uh, look forward to seeing you all the next time. Bye. 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 Good yeah. job, Bye. Bye.